Hi everyone. I'm Ashley Moore and I'm responsible for food safety across both supply chain and retail and for our retail food safety standards in Greg's. This involves leading a team of food safety experts, ensuring customer safety and brand protection. I'd like to thank the FSA for the invitation to share the experiences we've had in Greg's with regards to implementing and embedding allergen management across the business. The story of Greg's started over 80 years ago when John Greg started out with one goal, to deliver fresh eggs and yeast to the families of Newcastle by push bike. 10 years later, he chained up his bike and opened Greg's of Gosper. The first photograph on the slide is of John's very first shop where they made, baked and sold fresh bread and tasty treats. Over the years, we've opened more and more shops across the country and looked for ways we could make Greg's even better. Behind the freshly made sandwiches and the golden puff pastry sausage rolls, we've always been committed to doing the right thing. Back in the 60s, we started with our free pie and peas supper for older residents in Gateshead, and we began to be known for helping the community. The Greggs Foundation was formally founded in 1983, and today we still have the same commitment to our communities. Each year, with support from our partners, we provide 6 million free wholesome breakfasts to primary school children with our Breakfast Club programme. And our annual Children's Cancer Run has raised over £30 million for cancer research to date. We have ownership of our very own supply chain and logistics operations, which have also moved on considerably in the last 80 years. From one small bakery in Gosforth, we now have 10 manufacturing and distribution sites across the UK. This puts us in quite a unique position to make good, freshly prepared food accessible to everyone. We've come a long way from serving freshly baked products to working families around Newcastle in the 1930s but we're just as keen for Greg's to have a positive impact on people's lives today as we were then. The world has changed in a short space of time. The way we shop and our food on the go eating habits have too. We've been quick to react by building on our existing estate of shops to take Greg's where our customers want us to be and can now be found in retail parks, shopping centres, industrial estates, office parks, roadside locations, supermarkets, and key transport hubs, including motorway service stations, petrol forecourts, train stations, tube stations, and airports. Our delivery and wholesale partnerships mean more and more customers can enjoy Greg's from the comfort of their own homes when it suits them. It is our duty as a responsible business to stand for more than just profit. Launched in February 2021, our first full sustainability report, the Greg's Pledge, is about how we can do more to help people protect the planet and work with our partners to change the world for the better. As with any business, our customers are central to what we do. We have grown from one shop in Newcastle to over 2,000 shops with 10 manufacturing sites. The safety of our customers has remained of paramount importance. We do not treat allergens any differently to any other food safety risk. They are embedded in our food safety management systems and training with all of our teams across the business from day one of employment. We have completed a full review of our product range, removing allergens wherever reasonably possible. And we have a policy in place to ensure that allergens are not added in any new product development or recipe changes. We have full segregation of allergens in our manufacturing and logistics operations, 
and ensure segregation as far as is reasonably possible in our busy kitchens, in our shops. The Greg's Food Safety Steering Group is made up of functions from right across the business, ensuring that everybody knows their responsibilities with regards to food safety, encouraging a positive food safety culture throughout. The only way we do actually treat allergens slightly different to other food safety considerations in Greg's is that they have their own specifically named working group. The Greg's Allergen Working Group was set up in 2018 and is made up of a number of cross-functional team members and still meets on a fortnightly basis. The group consists of representatives from technical, retail, customer care, supply chain, logistics, communication and training functions. We have implemented a new serious customer complaint escalation process, which ensures that allergen complaints are escalated to the board of, our board of directors and functional heads, and that they are investigated urgently across the relevant area, be that supplier, supply chain, logistics or retail. The main purpose of the group is to ensure that the business continually improves and reacts appropriately to any trends in customer complaints relating to allergens, and of course, any change in compliance levels. It is essential that all of our customer information is clear, accurate, meaningful, and evidence-based. Our allergen information is available on labels of pre-packed and pre-packed for direct sale products and is available for all products in our allergen information guide, which is available in our shops, online and on our app. Information is held on our specification system for each ingredient and product. This data is live, so if a product or ingredient changes, then the information available to the customer is also updated, ensuring that it remains accurate for the customer every single time. All allergen risk assessments are carried out end to end from supplier, through supply chain, through logistics, into our shops and onto the final consumer. It is absolutely essential that the whole journey of the ingredient and product is taken into consideration to ensure that the information provided to customers is accurate and meaningful. Training and education of all operational teams and even customers where appropriate is essential. It must provide the relevant level of information, be accurate, and up to date and suitable for the audience. It really must include why the training is important, not just provide information as to what to do and what not to do. Confirmation of learning should be used where possible, by quizzes, for example. And of course, records of learning must be kept. Refresher training is just as important which should not just be a repeat of the original training material. It must be meaningful and if appropriate, should be approached from a different angle to make the required impact. Once the training is completed, this should only be the first stage. Embedding the information throughout the year is also important. This could be through newsletters or focus weeks, for example. We also make use of external, national and international campaigns, such as Food Safety Week or Allergy Charity campaigns to help keep awareness alive. We recently teamed up with the Allergy Team to create a video specifically for Greg's, which tells the story of a little boy with multiple food allergies and how the day-to-day -day lives of the family are impacted. We did this with the aim of bringing the real life emotional impact of the importance of allergen management to life for all of our teams. Here is a quick clip from the video. 
I can't eat anything with milk in it, anything with hazelnuts in it, or mango. My son Cameron is seven years old, is living with severe food allergies. It's, it's always worrying when we go out for a meal. We're just wishing and hoping that everything goes okay. On the 1st of October, a new allergen labelling law comes into effect in the UK. You might have heard of it as Natasha's law. Right, we're going to start making some sandwiches now uh, on the new production screen. By taking our responsibilities extremely seriously, we could be saving someone's life. Hi, are you alright? Um, I was going to get this today. Um, I was wondering if I had any shellfish in. I have to check on the allergen tablet. Yeah, no worries. So if you look down at tuna fun. Yeah. That's fine, yeah. For you, it's a basic thing. A family with allergies have turned up. You've catered for us. But for us, it's more than that. If the staff at every point are aware of the food allergies, that to me gives me so much reassurance to know that my son will be safe. We also engage externally. Of course, with the FSA, but with others too. These include industry bodies, allergy charities, research bodies and other operators in the food industry. The slide shows just a few of those that we work closely with. We are in a great position with food safety being non-competitive and we have found that working together, sharing experiences, issues and best practice with other parts of the food industry helps the development of policy and procedures and the consistency of messaging to customers. I'll now move on to Natasha and Natasha's law. I know you will all be aware of the information on this slide, but it is such an important reminder as to why allergen management and accurate labelling is so important. Natasha Ednan Laprouse was just 15 years old, simply going on holiday with her dad and her best friend. Natasha collapsed during a flight from Heathrow to Nice on the 17th of July 2016 after eating a baguette. Despite her father administering two EpiPen injections, Natasha died within hours. Natasha's family have worked tirelessly for a change in the law to make it mandatory for products that are pre-packed for direct sale to be labelled appropriately. On the 1st of October last year, it became law for products that are pre-packed for direct sale to be labelled with a full ingredients list with allergens emphasised, as shown in the example from the FSA. So what exactly is pre-packed for direct sale? Whether a food is or isn't pre-packed for sale isn't always that obvious. And in some cases, the same product can be both, depending on when, where, and how it is packed. So let's start with an easy one. A Greg sandwich is pre-packed for direct sale. It is made in our shops, but it is placed before being chosen by the customer. A sausage roll or donut sold from behind the counter are not pre-packed for direct sale. They are loose. Allergen information must still be available, but does not yet need to be on a label. However, if the same products are put into packaging prior to being selected by a customer, then they become pre-packed for direct sale and do need a label. A burger that is prepared after the customer has ordered it is not pre-packed for direct sale. However, the same burger that has been prepared in anticipation of a lunchtime rush and is wrapped, then becomes pre-packed for direct sale. We took the opportunity of the change in legislation to digitalise the way we operationally prepare pre-packed for direct sale products in our shops. This ended up with the sourcing of approximately 48,000 pieces of hardware including printers, screens and computers, and the development of software to enable our current specification system to be able to talk to the new hardware. 
The new system ensures that the most up-to-date product information is always available and applied to the label on our products. We have also developed a new process to ensure that labels can only be printed at the time of preparation of the product so that the information is always as up-to-date as possible. We have also implemented a secondary check to be carried out by another team member to ensure that the label is on the right product every time. We have rolled out tablets across our estate, replacing the old paper allergen guide, which were often difficult to version control in over 2000 locations. We have agreed contingency plans for if we are unable to print labels, whether this is due to hardware, software or connectivity issue. We have implemented compliance checks and added a pre-packed for direct sales section into our business assurance audits to ensure that we can measure and monitor compliance. This compliance level is reported to the operational board of directors on a weekly basis, which helps us to see areas where improvements may be needed. So what's next? There's still lots to do. We must continue to review and develop allergen controls and risk assessments end to end. We must continue to investigate all allergy complaints with a view to being more proactive on root cause and therefore prevention. We are planning an allergen crisis scenario simulation for our operational board of directors and senior team and we will assess and implement changes where required following the outcome of the precautionary allergen labelling consultation, which is still open for comments. So I just thought I'd finish with a few points from a learnings perspective. I'd say it's really important to have engagement from your own business and functional teams. This is absolutely essential Allergens are not just a technical issue. Get ahead, listen to your customers. The complaint information and trends that they can provide are often invaluable. Allergen information must be risk assessed end to end every time to ensure that accurate, meaningful information is provided. Train and educate. And remember that sometimes this may need to include your customers. Engage externally, share experiences and learn from others. And continually review and monitor with the, with the aim to improve your compliance levels. Thank you for listening. I'd be happy to take any questions you may have in the panel Q&A. Thank you.